we are in the home stretch now, finishing up this sword. What we're going to do right now is take it into the grinding room and I'm going to clean off the guard. I'm actually going to use uh, my bead blaster and I'm going to clean it off really good so that I can gun blow it. I want to get a nice even finish across the whole thing and then I'm going to do some etching on it with a little laser engraver. Uh, when I did this for the show, I did it by hand, uh, and I could certainly do that, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to use the tools that I have now. So this is a, a tool that I, I really, really love, and I'm going to have some fun with that uh, to put a really nice design on there to kind of pay tribute. Um, well, I'll show you. As always, eyes, ears, lungs, let's have some fun. Well, that looks phenomenal. So what I'm doing here is using a fiber optic laser to etch a pattern onto the steel. May the wings of liberty never lose a feather. That was actually on my original blade for the show, but because of the constraints of the show, I put it in Scottish Gaelic, which meant that nobody could actually read it, unless, of course, you read Scottish Gaelic, and this you made perfect sense. Uh, I also had an American flag on there, and I also had the Purple Heart. That was one of the things I'd love to improve on, is the design of the Purple Heart, so I did that here, and I also, uh, the everything was hand engraved with a, a Dremel and a, a pointy bit, and all of that. So in this case, I didn't have this tool. Now I have this tool. If I had this tool then, I certainly would have used it for my sword for the show. This looks really clean. It looks really, really good. It fits. Uh, it's still got the right design aesthetic for this piece. Uh, and I'm really, really happy with the way that this turned out. And I also had the words quick and powerful, which come from a scripture. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, which is one of my favorites and kind of a representation of my faith. I also had a cross. Well, I've got the cross in the guard, and so now, instead of just putting the words quick and powerful, I'm going to flip it over to the other side and I'm going to laser etch that scripture on. Now I'm going to go through the process of cold bluing this. And it's really a simple process. There's just a chemical you spray on it. It changes the color of the steel. You wipe it in, get a good, nice good finish. You let it sit for a little bit. If you let it sit for too long, you get a rust blue finish. Uh, and then you wipe everything off and give it a good oil. So that's what we're going to do. So take a look. With the guard finished, <clears throat> it's now time to turn my attention to the handle, and I want to do some layout lines for doing flutes. So now I've got this roughed out. That'll give me some guidelines for where to actually carve my lines, set the uh, cuts for my wire inlay, and then start shaping and rounding over those flutes. The handle's already comfortable. If it's not comfortable before you start this process, it's not going to be comfortable after. So uh, it's a little on the oversized, just a little bit, so that I can shave that down, but it's right there in that sweet spot. So now that it's all laid out, I'll have four nice spiral flutes around here that I can set my wire into. The handle is rough shaped. <sighs> now, I've got a fever. The only thing that can help it is hand sanding. It's <laughs> a terrible joke. <laughs> The wire inlay itself is not 
that bad at all. Start by putting the wire into the hole and then pulling it tight. I work my way around, pressing it first time just by finger tightness into the groove that I've cut. Checking to make sure that my groove is even, everything fits. And then this way I can mark it off and cut where it needs to be on the back side. And I'm gonna do these one at a time. That way I can put it in, put a little wooden wedge in to hold it in place, put a drop of super glue, and then hold that into the slot. It should come out very, very nicely. I'm gonna repeat that process for the other three wires. This handle is looking great. My wires are all in place, everything's right and tight. I'm just gonna clean everything up and then I can start fitting this thing together. I'm getting excited. Uh, the sword is ready to, to go into final assembly. I wanna do a leather, kind of a leather pouch for the inside. Uh, typically for a sword like this, you would just stick a cloth in there or something. But I, when I made this before, I hand stitched a, a little leather lining for it. So I'm gonna create another one. Um, and I, the last time I did it, I did it with um, leather that I dyed blue. This time I actually happened to have some blue suede. I was gonna make shoes out of it, but I thought maybe people might step on them. So instead I'm going to make a pouch for the inside of this sword. So I'm gonna cut that out, stitch it together, and, and hopefully my pattern will fit. What I've done is cut out a, a pattern that I think will fit the inside of my guard. And my idea is to stitch it together and, and then turn it inside out and hopefully the seams will kind of be invisible. I've made some overlap here. So I'm gonna set that up, I'm gonna try it. I have no idea if it's gonna work, I've never done it before, but uh, it wasn't my idea. I gotta give credit to that to my daughter who gave me that idea as I'm trying to improve this. Last time I just cut a bunch of strips of leather up by hand. We're gonna see what happens here. So here goes nothing. We're gonna turn this thing inside out and see if it looks even remotely like what we wanted it to look like. I've never done this before, so I have no idea. Well, I have never done it this way before. Ooh, I think that's gonna be just what we're wanting. Yeah. Nice little pouch. What I'm doing right now is gluing in these little spacers. Um, what these are actually there for is to provide a really, really good fit between the handle and the guard. And they also are designed to hold this leather uh, interior wrap. So it's kind of a pocket that goes around your hand, protects your hand from bumping into the steel. And these spacers are only gonna be glued down in the, in the middle. There'll be just enough space in there for me to wedge that suede inside, and then it'll be a pressure fit all the way around, and it'll hold that pouch really nicely and tightly. It's not going anywhere. It's a cool little trick that's gonna work really well on this sword. The glue up for this sword is fairly straightforward. Uh, there's not a need for a lot of epoxy because there's such a tight fit between the handle and the uh, tang of the blade that it really, there doesn't need to be a lot of epoxy because it's just gonna all squeeze out.
the last and one of the trickiest parts of the assembly is painting this pommel on. I want to be really, really careful because I'm going to be hammering on the end of the tang. My glue should be set, but I don't want to rely on the strength of that glue joint to actually hold everything in place. The worst thing that could possibly happen is hammering too hard and breaking the glue bonds and actually forcing the sword back out of the assembly. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to take my time. I'm going to give it some isolated heat with a welding torch on my oxyacetylene uh, rig. And then I'm just going to paint it over very, very slowly until I get it to the shape that I want. Once I've done that, everything will be riveted together. This will be a mechanical bond and this sword will never come apart. The sword is done. Now, is it a Forged in Fire winning sword? I'll be honest, I made one that won Forged in Fire. This is the same type of sword and it's far superior to the one that won the show. But as I said on the show, it's always a gamble on Forged in Fire. It may win, it may not, but it certainly has the potential to win a show like that. And I made it within the time parameters uh, that the show required of me to make it. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this. I wanna show you this blade, but one thing I wanna ask you before I do, other than just always like and subscribe, if you're interested in purchasing a knife or a sword, message me, who knows, I might make a video series making yours. Thanks so much for joining me on the journey. Let's take a look at this blade.